time of year right now, this season that's come upon us of Thanksgiving, and I felt in uh, compelled this week as I thought on what the Lord would have us to speak about, to speak to us about thankfulness and how much that it is a part of our walk with the Lord. You know, you can receive a gift, but if you're not thankful for that gift, it don't mean as much to you as someone who right beside of you received the same gift and it just overflows their heart because it means so much to them. I want to be thankful for what the Lord has done for me. I, I don't want to fall subject to an unthankful heart. But to be thankful means to be relieved, to be pleased, to be satisfied or content, to have a joyful heart. To, thank, to be thankful will cause you to be happy. Amen. It will help you through tough times by bringing to mind all the good things in your life. I want to be thankful. I want to enjoy the joy of thankfulness. I believe today we're living in uh, a time that seems to be, for the spirit of people, the most unthankful generation that we have ever seen to exist on this earth mainly because they are not pleased, they are not satisfied, they are not content. Um, children today, even the poorest children, are blessed abundantly beyond compare to what the generations that come before us had at the same time in their life. But we're dealing with a group of people today who are just plain and simple, unthankful. This is a sin. It's not just an emotion. It's not just a characteristic. But unthankfulness leads to being sin in your life. So many are not pleased or not satisfied, not content. Therefore, they are not thankful. You can give many exactly what they ask for, and they show no gratitude for what they have received. And there is no joy in their heart because there is no thankfulness. I want you to look with me in your Bibles to Luke chapter 17. We have here the story of the ten lepers. The Lord laid this on my heart from the very beginning and how some people can receive such wonderful gift directly from the Lord and have such an unthankful heart. But I want us to look at verses 11 through 13. It came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. I want to stop right there if we can. This certain village that Jesus had stopped at, no doubt, appears to be where the lepers dwelt or a colony maybe of lepers. But they were stricken with a disease, leprosy, which was the most dreaded disease known to man. 
they were in a state of, you know, the Jews considered this affliction to be uh, uh, inflicted upon some as, as penalty of a particular sin. They felt it was some kind of judgment on their lives that they had received this dreaded disease. The, the leprosy, the disease was very easily recognized. It was not something that you could hide for a very long time because it was going to be revealed. With white patches on the skin, and it led to running sores, the loss of digits, the loss of the nose, the blindness in their eyes, and so forth, even to the point that they were rendered unclean and unfit to worship the Lord God Almighty. And they were uh, quarantined and isolated and moved away from the common people and the congregation that they could not even come in to the house of God and worship as everyone else had the opportunity to. And we see here their need and their, uh, uh, the depth of their plead when they cried out to Jesus to have mercy. When they heard Jesus was coming by their way, the Bible says they went out to meet him, but they stood afar off. They had been instructed and there was punishment for disobedience of coming too close to someone who was clean because they were counted as being unclean and they were taught and instructed, you stay, you stay back, you, stay, you stand afar off. And so they did. But they saw their help coming their way and they went out to meet him and cried, Master, Lord, Jesus, help. I thought when I read this, I too one day stood afar off from the Lord as every one of us. We stood afar off and we were in the greatest destitute position in our lives. We were lost and undone without the Lord and there was no hope but for us to call on Jesus. When Peter spoke of the Gentiles, he said in times past we were not even a people. Right? In other words, you really did not even exist, especially in the eyes of the Jews. You were but a lowly Gentile, dogs, not even a people. But listen, but he says, but now are the people of God. Can you say thank you, Lord, for that? He said, we had not obtained mercy. In other words, there was no mercy. What did the, what did the lepers here ask for? Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. We as Gentiles at one day, we stood in a place that there was no mercy that existed for us. But he says, we had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. We cannot even put into words, we cannot even describe the magnitude of the mercy that's been placed on our lives. Uh, we, you know, we, we've had it so easy. Uh, I'll speak for myself. I've had it so easy my whole life. You know, I, I, I fully don't even really, I can't really even comprehend the mercy that was extended to me. But I know this. Without the mercy and grace of God, I would be lost. And one day I would wake up in hell and I would realize the magnitude of the mercy that I have rejected or failed to find. But he said, but now we have obtained mercy. 
thank the Lord. Christ made a way that we could come boldly before the throne of grace. Something that we take so for granted every day of our lives. We pray every day, don't we? We fall on our knees. We, sometimes I lay in the bed and just look to the ceiling and pray. Sometimes I pray going down the road. Many different times of the day. Sometimes I'm driving a nail and, and praying at the same time. But we have an opportunity to come boldly before the throne of grace. Why? Because we have obtained mercy. That's the only reason. Have mercy, they said. Have mercy on us. They, they didn't ask to be healed. I know that's what they were wanting. But, their first re, but the first request was have mercy. You ever felt like there was a time in your life that you basically just wanted mercy from the Lord? Uh, whatever situation you're in, you know, looking to the Lord and looking to Him to, to work it out and ever how He sees fit. But right now, Lord, I need mercy. You know, that's something great to ask the Lord for. Why? He's the only one that can offer it. Have mercy. Listen, verse 14 says, When he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now listen, when you, in those days when you had leprosy, when there was a, a healing that took place or... or when the disease was gone, you could not just you know, make a decision yourself to come back to the house of God or come back into the community and dwell as you saw fit. But you had to go before the priest because they were set in a place with the authority. They uh, examined physically those who had been deemed a leper and they examined them to see if they were actually clean, if the disease was gone, if there was no threat of coming into the congregation and spreading it further. They had to go before the priest. Jesus simply said to them, Go show yourself to the priest. Hmm. Now, at that point, they were not healed. The Lord had not touched them. But it says... Uh, it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Now I want us to understand something here. Every one of them received the same instruction. All ten of them said, the Lord said, go show yourselves to the priest. All ten of them turned and headed towards the priest together. On their way, all ten of them was cleansed. Right? Why? This represents here obedience to the word and faith, acting in faith as they went their way. All ten of them was obeying the Lord and their faith. And on their way, they were cleansed. And they realized, hey, it's gone. But listen, realizing they were healed... The nine seems to run faster to the priest for approval, for a declaration of cleanness, to be freed from their sentence of confinement, to begin the enjoyment of life once again, and all the benefits that came with their deliverances. That don't sound so horrible, does it? No. Every, all, every one of them. When they realized they were healed, they headed that much faster towards the priest. They wanted someone to put his approval on what the Lord had done. And they were eager to get back to a normal life and to begin to enjoy all the blessings that was going to come with this healing. Really doesn't sound so horrible. It sounds perfectly human. And normal, really, doesn't it? 
But listen, there was one. Verse 15 says, And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now listen, it's one thing to receive a blessing from the Lord. I enjoy it. I never turn any of them away. Do you? No. All ten of these guys received the same blessing. But nine of them had their eyes on reaping the blessing and the benefits that was going to come with the blessing. You know, it's hard to get our, our, our human mind away from that direction. But one had a different heart. Listen. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now listen, this same loud voice that a few minutes ago he was raising up his voice saying, Lord, Master, have mercy. You know, I thought sometimes we can cry out with a loud voice, Lord, have mercy, I need your help right now. And we wouldn't care who hurt us under the situation. And because of the circumstances, we would cry out, I'm looking to the Lord. But so many times when the Lord blesses, it, we, we're good if we say, thank you, Jesus. But this one, he lifted up a voice of thanksgiving as loud as the voice that he was crying out to the Lord for help. Now listen, the same loud voice of mercy, not waiting for the priest to put his approval on what was done, but acknowledging God and where his mercy actually came from. Now no doubt he wanted to have a clean bill of health also. You know, he wanted to get back to a normal life, but he found it in his heart. I'm going to take time right here to be thankful. Glory to God. I want to be thankful. I don't want to take for granted all the good things that the Lord has done for me and treat them as though they're not. But I want to have a thankful heart. Listen. Verse 16 says, And he fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. Now listen. How many of us have been around the church and around holiness and around the word of God and around the truth all of our lives? Well now listen, this was a Samaritan, the Bible says. It points out something here particular for us to take notice of. At least one of them was a Samaritan. Now, it appears as though the other nine were Jews. The Bible does not clearly say, but we know all of them were not Samaritans because it singles out this one who turned around to give thanks. So we're going to assume the other nine were Jews. Well, he says this one who turned around and give thanks was a Samaritan. What's What's so significant about this? He didn't have the pure knowledge and the worship of God as the Jews had. He didn't know all that they knew. He had not been taught all that they had been taught. He had not had the way of life that they had had. But he had something in his heart. Listen. He didn't have the pure knowledge and the worship of God as the Jews had. They had forgot to give thanks or even refused when they were reminded. Now this is a mark against them right here. And it's a mark against you and I when we fail to give thanks to God. All ten of them traveling together and the one says, I'm going back to give thanks. Don't think the other nine didn't know that or didn't see that, or recognize that, but it did not compel them to be thankful. 
And maybe they had forgot in all of their excitement of their healing, but I'm sure they were reminded when this one said, I'm going back and show my gratitude. But they continued on their way. God help us not to be unthankful. There are too many things to remind us of the goodness of God. There are too many scenes in our life. There are too many times that God has come on the scene and answered prayers to remind us of the goodness of God. Let's not continue on our way with an unthankful heart. Verse 17 and 18 says, And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. The percentage of nine-tenths here. Jesus said, were there not ten lepers cleansed? Well, wasn't it? I know there were ten. Where are the nine? This percentage of nine-tenths shows us here that unthankfulness and ingratitude is a very common sin. Mm-hmm. Nine-tenths here shows us, if can you see the scale from one-tenth to nine-tenths? It shows us how unthankfulness and ingratitude to God is a common sin. And still yet today... Very few people render praise and worship and thankfulness according to the benefits done unto them. Now, like I say, so many times we say, thank you, Jesus. But listen, could we really see what God has actually done for us, how we should be thanking Him, how we should be worshiping Him, how we should be praising Him, David said, God inhabits our praise. Right? He inhabits our praise. What does that mean? He longed for it. That's not really what it means. Listen now. God inhabits our praise. What's it mean? Where there is praise, where there is worship, where there is thankfulness, There is where you'll find God. He inhabits it. What's he mean? That's where he dwells. It doesn't just mean he longs for it and wants it. No, it means where it is, there is where he is. Sometimes we wonder why we can't see God in our lives. Let me tell you something. He inhabits our praise. If we got a heart of praise and worship and thankfulness before God, He's going to be there. As Jesus made His triumphal entry into Jerusalem, excuse me, As Jesus made his triumphal entrance into Jerusalem, he sent two of his disciples on in front of him. And he said, go into a certain place. And he said, you're going to find there a little colt. Never has a man written on the back of this little colt. He said, he's going to be tied there. He said, you go and loose him and bring him to me. And if anybody questions... You just say the Lord hath need of him. The Lord hath need of him. So the two went into the town and they found this little colt exactly as the Lord said and he was tied there and they walk up and they loose him and they begin to lead him away and the owners come up and say, hey, what y'all doing? That's my colt. You just turned loose there. Where do you think you're going with him? The Lord hath need of him. What did the Lord need a little coat for? He was not going to walk in to Jerusalem. He was going to ride. Hmm? Simple as that, ain't it? He wanted this little coat 
to bring him honor. Oh, he didn't ride in on a wild, black, shiny stallion full of silver. No, he said, bring me the little colt. I have need of him. He was going to bring honor to the master. As he walked in, or as he rode in, many that followed him took their clothes and they laid in as he went into Jerusalem. And they praised and worshipped the Lord with a loud voice. The Pharisees that were there came to the Lord and said, Hey, quieten this crowd down. Remember? He said, quieten this, quieten this crowd down. They were just praising and worshiping the Lord. And the Bible says, For the wonderful things that he had done. There was thankfulness. There was praise. There was worship. Why? For the things that he had done and they had seen. And they were honoring their Lord. So much as these officials said, you need to quieten this crowd down out here. Jesus said, if these hold their peace, if these hold their peace, the rocks will immediately begin to cry out. Why? He inhabits praise. And he's going to have it. And I want to be one that is thankful. I want to be one saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We used to sing an old song, I don't want no rock to cry out in my place. Well, wouldn't that be sad? Wouldn't that be sad for us if rocks around here begin to cry out, holy, holy, holy? Huh? When we right here, recipients of grace and mercy, we better be thankful. Listen, you and I, we were a people. We were not even a people, the Bible says. But we have been grafted in. Now, what's the main reason for that? Because there was a group of people who were not even thankful for who Jesus was. They would not even identify him, acknowledge him as the Son of God. We've been grafted in. We've been given an opportunity now to show our gratitude, our thankfulness unto the Lord. Where are the nine the Lord says. The stranger. Where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God save this stranger. Listen. Many who profess religion and exalt themselves to such a high standard of people are going to be outdone and put to shame by those who praise and worship God from a thankful heart. By those whose praise and worship is governed only by a thankful heart. This little Samaritan, he didn't know no better than to express what was in his heart. I, I have got to return and show my gratitude. Hmm. He was considered a stranger. The Bible says something about the first shall be last and the last shall be first. I want to be one praising the Lord. I want to be one that there's no rock that's got my name on it out there somewhere that says one day they're going to have to cry out because I'm going to cease to do it. I don't want that judgment on me, do you? Verse 19 And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee, what? Whole. Now, he wasn't just cleansed, but the Lord said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Complete. 
The Lord reveals his faith and his thankfulness has made him whole. Has made him complete. What's that saying to us? If we don't have thankfulness in our heart and praise and worship and gratitude to the Lord, all that he has done for us is not going to make us whole. Our worship and our walk with Lord, the Lord, we are only made whole and complete when we have a heart of thanksgiving. When we have a pure heart of worship before the Lord. Many may be healed, but what makes our status complete and fulfilled is our thankfulness. Now, his faith, the Lord said, thy faith had made thee whole. His faith was not hinging on what the priest had to say. That's, what, that's not what strengthened his faith. The nine had their aim on making it to that priest and him examining them and saying, yep, you are healed. That was the instruction from the Lord. That's what he had told them to do. But this one... He was putting all of his faith in the master and his gratitude in the master. Paul writes in 2 Timothy 3 and 2 of the last days and the perilous times and of the awful state of mankind on this earth. Read it there and we can see it all around us. But listen, included in that is the spirit of being un. Thankful. It's right beside the list there. It's right beside of unholy. It's speaking about the last days and a generation of people and their low estate, what mankind has degraded to. And one of the characteristics or the spirit of them will be un. Thankful. You can't touch their heart. No matter how good the Lord is to them, He can't find no gratitude from them. Unthankful. You know, we'll stand before the Lord one day. Caleb was talking to me and his mom the other day. He was reading in the Bible there and he come to us and said, you know, the Bible says, we're going to give an account for every idle word. I said, does it say that? <laughs> no. I said, yeah, it says that. He said, that means every word you ever say? I said, yeah, that's what it means. We're going to give an account for every sin, right? But let me tell you something that's going to be hard judged. Unthankfulness. Hmm. You mean I laid down my life for you and you were unthankful? God, help me not to be unthankful. Help me to have at least enough about me to be thankful. There's nothing no more, I'll say ugly, there's nothing no more ugly than a child that has not been taught to be thankful. Who gets, gets, gets. <laughs> we gave a little, a little, a little boy in our life a few years ago, he had a little birthday party. Spider Man was real big then. Had these gloves, you know, that, that you put the glove on, you mash a little button, it'd shoot a web out there. They were cool little things. We bought him a little pair of Spider Man gloves for his birthday. We gave them to him, wrapped them. He said, Wow, put them on. Said, wow, you could have bought the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted the whole outfit. <laughs> It was so precious. And he was thankful. But I'm just saying, that's how we can be with God. I don't care how God, the good he is to us. Sometimes we find ourselves unthankful. You could have done more. God help us. I don't want to be included in the category of someone who is unthankful. Listen, Joseph... How I many knows Joseph was type and shadow of the Messiah? He found himself in prison, 
right? Well, something he didn't do. But listen, Pharaoh's, he, he got ill one day. He started locking up a bunch of people. <laughs> well, his, his butler and his baker, right? He put them into prison. And, Fa- and, and Joseph was there with them. And they had dreams and they were disturbed about these dreams because they couldn't interpret them. They finally got hooked up with Joseph. Joseph said, I can tell you this dream. And he interpreted the dream for him. Right? He told the butler, he said, in three days, Pharaoh's going to bring you up out of this prison. You're going to be restored. Right? You once again, you'll bear the cup to Pharaoh again. And he told the baker, he said, things don't look too good for you. For in three days, Pharaoh's going to lift your head up off of your shoulders. Right? What happened? In three days, all of it came to pass. Right? I believe it was Pharaoh's birthday. Is that right? And he brought these two up. He restored the butler. And he beheaded the baker. Just as, Fa- just as Joseph told him that it would be. But listen. As Joseph spoke with them, or the the butler, he said, think on me. When this comes to pass, and you're brought up out of this prison in three days, think on me. Make, Make mention of me. Remember me, your old buddy buddy here. You know? Well, everything came to pass just like Joseph said. The butler was restored, and whoo, was the burden lifted off of him. Man, you reckon he was thankful? Probably so. But you know what he did? He forgot that Joseph even existed. Now let me tell you something. Don't think it didn't hurt Joseph. You know how long he spent in that prison before the butler remembered Before something happened, I believe Pharaoh had another dream. And and, and the butler said, wait a minute, I know who can deliver that. Who can interpret that? You know how long it was? Two years. Two years Joseph was left there in that prison while the butler paraded himself around and forgot that he even existed. I'm preaching this morning about ingratitude, unthankfulness. All Joseph said was, Make mention of me when you get out. Remember me. God help us. You think it don't hurt the Lord's feelings? You think he's not deeply hurt? The sacrifice that he has made and so many today won't even turn to say, thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, we need a national holiday for Thanksgiving. (laughs) Yeah, we need something to remind us, you need to be thankful. Let me tell you what the world has come to. I've watched a commercial there the other day. I'll not call the name of the place. Some of you may want to go patronize them. But one of these stores were putting on a big, uh, I believe it was a Black Friday or Thanksgiving sale or something. But they were making light of thankfulness. And they were the best I remember like in this little class and this one up in front of them said, repeat after me, I will be thankful. Everybody says, I will be thankful. I will show gratitude. I will show gratitude. Then he says, and I will enjoy all the gifts that I get at 50% off on Black Crazy. And they all go crazy. Woo! Y'all, anybody seen that but me? Let me tell you something. We better have more of a spirit about us than to say, I will be thankful. The world is more concerned about Black Friday specials than they are the Son of God and His sacrifice for mankind. When the pilgrims came here from Europe and they met the the natives here and they had a big feast together, you know one thing that they both had in common? They were thankful. They had a big feast and they said, wait a minute, before we eat now, we're going to give thanks. We need to get back 
to where we're thankful, to where we know what the Lord has done for us. Listen, the Lord has been so good to us, I can't afford to forget what He's done for me. Don't forget the goodness of God. When we forget to be thankful, we're guilty of trotting underfoot the Son of God and counting the blood of Jesus as an unholy thing. Amen. We should be thankful every day of the blessings of God on our life, so thankful for what we have that we would ever, wouldn't ever be mindful of what we don't have. You know, some people ponder more on what they don't have than what they do have. Let me tell you something. If we were mindful and thankful for what we do have, we wouldn't even have time to think about what we don't have. David said, offer unto God thanksgiving. Paul said, give thanks always for all things unto God. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. You know what God expects out of you? You know what His will is for you concerning Christ Jesus? Be thankful. That's all He's looking for. To be thankful to live a life of holiness, to acknowledge who Jesus is. I want you to look with me in Psalms in closing. This is my last. We'll just read this passage together here. But Brother Nick opened our service this morning with a... I believe you read the... Did you read the whole chapter, brother? I believe it was 105. Is that right? Psalms 105? He opened up this scripture this morning, this service this morning with this scripture about being thankful. Turn with me, chapter 100. Psalms 100. I want us to read together, if you will, if everybody's got it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. Be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Be thankful unto God. Be thankful. Enter into His courts with praise. Oh, it is He who hath made us. We have not made ourselves. Be thankful unto God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Amen. Oh, isn't that sweet? That's so sweet, isn't it? Be thankful. What's it mean, we're the sheep of His pasture? Everything we have comes from Him. We better learn to be thankful. God help us. And I know you are. I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching with you this morning. Let me tell you something. We need to lift up a standard before this world, this lost and dying world, that there is a group of people who is thankful unto God. And acknowledges him for who he is. Oh, we're the sheep of his pasture. What's that mean? We're helpless and hopeless without him. Where he leads, that's where I want to be. I appreciate you this morning. I hope that the word of God 
has been a blessing and encouragement to you.